So welcome everybody. This is the importance of prayer. Tonight we're talking about open up your mouth and release some things. So I'm so excited for everybody that couldn't make it to the live. I have some lovely, beautiful ladies on here tonight with me that got to make it to the live. So if you're watching the replay, shout out to you. You really, you really about it. And I want you to know that God is ready for you to open up your mouth and release some things so you can see your environment shift, right? I see my environment shift by the things that came out of my mouth, whether for the good or for the bad, right? If I wanted to see something miserable i spoke something miserable but if i wanted to see a miracle i spoke something positive that performed the miracle because i know that death and life death and life lies in the power of my tongue we can see that we can look and we're going to discuss that further dissect that but i just want you to know it's time for you to open up your mouth and release some things no longer do you have to be afraid ashamed embarrassed to open up your mouth don't let nobody else silence you last month we talked about talked about nothing response to silence nothing responds to silence so you gotta know that so here we go we're gonna get started as always with a word of prayer i'm gonna turn the music in the background down just a tad bit okay let me pray y'all let me get started with a word of prayer Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, God, and we just want to say thank you. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Father God, that you use all of me and less of me is shown on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of anything we did, said, or thought that was unpleasing in your sight. God, we thank you that we can come boldly before your throne of grace because we know who Jesus Christ is. And Lord God, if it wasn't for Jesus, none of us would be here. So we thank you, God, for Jesus. And God, we thank you, Father God, for the moving of your Holy Spirit on tonight. God, I decree and declare that we will, Father God, walk out of this, Father God, knowing that we have the power to speak and shift our environments with our mouths oh god in the name of g i call for healing now in the name of jesus healing to any emotional wounds god healing to any physical boundaries and physical problems that we have going on on the inside of our bodies god we speak life over it now god god you are going to have your way on tonight god let these ladies be open to speak clearly father god to you father god and speak clearly father god to say father god things that are going to help one one another father god we thank you now god we rebuke all demonic forces that may try to stop each and every person from speaking on tonight in the name of jesus god let us speak clearly father god let us father god say what thus say of the lord oh god so that you may get all the glory and now god i thank you for each and every person that has registered god i pray a divine blessing upon them now divine favor upon them now divine healing upon them now god they are traveling mercies upon their lives oh god in the name of jesus god do what only you can do in and throughout them oh god so that you may get the glory and we thank you for tonight god all of our wrongs we don't have to worry about it no more when we bring it to your feet because jesus died so that our wrongs could be made right and you can see us just as you see jesus and you see jesus as beautiful therefore you see us as beautiful we are beautiful we are loved we are chosen we are blessed father god because that's what you called us to be we are who you say we are not what we think Think not what people say or what people see, but we are who you say we are, God. Now we will open up our mouths and release what thus saith the Lord so that you may get the glory. God, I cover this thing with the blood of Jesus and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So welcome, ladies. Welcome, ladies. As I said, feel free to turn your camera on. Unmute yourself. I don't want to be talking at you, but here we go. So, of course, everybody, hey, I'm Tamanese Chalmers. For those that do not know me, I am a native of Delaware. I'm a faithful member at Revival Fellowship Church, and I'm simply here because I am obeying God's instructions. So for those that are new, please, please, please private chat me or come off a of mute and share who you are, what's a little bit about yourself, who you are, what's a little bit about yourself, and why you're joining us tonight. If you want to come off a of mute and say that, that's absolutely fine. Welcome to all those that are joining. We are having a short introduction, just explaining who we are. If you want to, you can privately message me. If not, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I'm going to give everybody five more seconds. Okay, I ain't see nobody come off of mute. 
for those that are joining, welcome, welcome. I thank you for having your camera on. Just letting you know this is being recorded. You can keep your camera on. You can come off a of mute, but we're going to push it forward, push it forward. Okay, so here we go. I want to talk with y'all, and y'all can just be as interactive as possible in the chat. You can say that. But who remembers, if you can come off mute or write in the chat, who remembers our challenge from last month and how did you do with it? So we have six different colors on the screen, right? So we have yellow, we have blue, we have red, we have purple, we have orange, and we have green. So yellow was for those individuals that had this phrase. I'm still fighting to build my prayer life. I'm not going to stop. Blue was for I'm um, smooth sailing in my prayer life. Me and the father be chatting, and I love every minute of it. The people that's in red, they say this. I stepped out on faith and opened my heart. Now I'm praying like never before. The people that, you know, maybe in the color purple, not the movie, but the color purple for this specific thing, they probably saying this. I wanted to complete the challenge, but many distractions got in the way. I will proceed with this month's challenge. The people that are in orange says this, I overcame my fears and met with the father on a daily basis with distractions being limited. And the people that are green saying, are saying this, I got my feet wet, but I got caught up and reverted back to my old ways before this challenge. So on the count of three, if you already know that color you have in your mind, I'm gonna count to three, I'm gonna count from count down three, two, one. And I'm gonna ask that everybody put their response in the chat or write me personally, okay? So three, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, a couple seconds to think about it. I'm looking at it too to figure out where I was at. Okay, I know where I was at. All right, so I'm gonna count down. Everybody ready? Give me a thumbs up or something reaction. You can give me a thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna count down. Just write your response in the chat. Okay, three, two, one, write your response. And I'm looking at the chat. Thank you, thank you. I see one response. And you can be honest with yourself. Okay, okay. Anybody else? So, I'm going to be honest. Mine was orange. Um, Like I told y'all last month, Back in December, my prayer life was trying to be taken from me because I was undergoing some health issues and a lot of distractions were upon, great, great, great. A lot of distractions were upon me, you know, in front of me. They weren't upon me, they were in front of me, right? And I wasn't really able to utilize my prayer life as I should have. And so in January, the Lord actually got me back in my ready place with him. And I got to say, I've been in all these colors before. I'm not even going to lie. I've been in green where I got my feet wet, wet and got caught back up in my old ways. And currently, I'm in orange. I overcame my fears and met with the father on a daily basis with distractions being limited. So back in January, I started writing in my prayer journal. Like, I was writing heavily. Like, that was my, that was my thing. That was my prayer journal. I was writing, writing, writing. That's how I felt like I could release some different things. But this month in February, I started back opening up my mouth and I had to decree and declare and I had to even go back to my confessions. I do daily confessions because if I can be honest, I stopped saying, I used to say confessions like hardcore every day for like three years straight. But what had happened was, of course, distractions came. I allowed them to distract me and I stopped. I thought I was good. I thought I didn't need to confess. You know the word of God on a daily basis or things like that so I didn't I stopped my confession I still had a prayer life I you know I know how to pray and stuff like that but I didn't confess different things and it stopped it's, it stopped a lot of things from flowing in my life and that's what I believe that's what hindered my prayer life too not being able to utilize my confessions so thank y'all for all participating in this without further ado I'm gonna continue to go forward so tonight's main scripture is Romans 4 and 17 if anybody want to come off a of mute, that would be so lovely because I'm tired of talking already. If somebody can come off of a mute, it doesn't matter which version you'll read, but we'll all get the same meeting. Whatever version speaks best to you. And I'm going to pull it up too on my phone, the scripture. Thank you. 
just uh, hold it up. Somebody came off a of mute about to read the scripture. That would be great. Good scripture. Yes, Romans four seventeen. Romans four seventeen. Anybody can uh, read it. So somebody else off a of mute, you can read it. I got it. Um, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in God's sight, in whom Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. So this, the specific thing that hit me tonight was he said, which calls those things into existence, which do not exist. So let's dive into that a little bit, right? Because the one the one that I normally read is the King James Version, I believe. And it says, which calls those things that be not as though they already are, right? But Miracle just read, which calls those things into existence that doesn't presently exist, right? So before we see it, we have to say it. And one night I was praying for my aunt and I was going into deep prayer. And I was like, before, you know, we see the manifestation of the healing take place, we have to say it. We have to proclaim it, right? So that's all we're talking about tonight. Romans 4, 17. So first and foremost, like I said, this is interactive. I want to know what does the word words mean to you? So at least two people come off of mute or somebody right in the chat. What is the definition definition of words to you? Think about it for a moment. Okay, I just wrote my definition down. Let's start with somebody coming off of me besides me <laughs> to give you a definition of words. There's no right or wrong answer, by the way. Happy. Okay, words mean happy. Okay, that's good. Words should utilize happy because we should be saying things that are according to joy or happiness. We should be speaking life. That's that's good. Anybody else? Yes, um, expression. Expression. That's good. And I don't want to stop nobody else if y'all want to come off of me. So Elena was right on what I wrote down. I wrote the vocal or written expression of one's heart coming either out of their mouth or on paper. So I literally just wrote that down. So Elena, we was right on in the flow of God because that's what God wants us to know tonight, that words are an expression of your heart. I didn't prepare this, y'all. I literally was on my phone now just writing this. This is words are the expression of your heart coming out of your mouth or on your paper. But tonight we're talking about these type of words that come out of your mouth. You know, last month I was geared in, some of us was geared in writing it down on paper. Nothing responds to silence. We had to write some things down and maybe sometimes we will read over what we've written down. But right now we're focusing on words coming out of our mouth. We're speaking and calling those things that be not as though they already are. So moving on to what this website has said, according to the definition of word, it says the fact or action of speaking as opposed to writing or to action. So this is saying that word, the, this exact person that wrote this definition is talking about that words is the fact or action of speaking. So when you're allowing words to come out your mouth, you're speaking facts or you're relating to some type of action, right? 
So moving on, let's go into how are words released, right? First and foremost, we got to understand that words are first introduced to us. Then they flow through our mind. Then they get into our heart and then they come out of our mouths. Let's think of a child, for instance, you know, a, a child that's born and then the mother and father, you know, they're help, they're raising the child and everything like that. They, you know, they may be saying mama, dad, dad, you know, I'm just thinking of a child. And the first thing, those words are being introduced to a child, right? And then those words, even at the age of whatever the age the child is, it begins to flow into to their mind, like mama, dad, dad. That might be that first word because they continuously keep hearing it. And then it gets in their heart, right? And we know for those that are believers or if you're a new believer, what you continuously hear and what you allow to flow through your mind, it gets in your heart. And then it ends up coming out of your mouth, right? So different environments, say we was in an environment like they talked about uh, fashion and fitness. And all they're talking about is fashion and fitness, right? And you got to know that you got to be the best. You got to wear the best. You got to look the best. So that's introduced to you. You know, you're, you're, you're looking at the environments and you're starting seeing the people talking about you got to wear the best, look the best, be the best, right? About fashion and fitness. And then it's starting to get into your heart like, man, I got to wear the best, be the best, and get the best, right? And then it starts come out, coming out of your mouth. I am the best. I wear the best. I look the best, right? So it was introduced to me. It started flowing through my mind and got in my heart and then it came out of my mouth, right? So that's really important because different things we're introduced to it, it doesn't mean that it's right for us you know so that's why we got to be at the right place at the right time because sometimes we're introduced to things that's not for our lives like for instance for me i know that when i was in college i was introduced to parties and i knew that i wasn't a party and i wasn't supposed to party but i did go to parties and then you know being around college you started flowing through your mind everybody talking about the party everybody talking about the party and then sometimes it get into your heart like yeah let me go to this party let me go to this party when it gets into your heart it becomes you, you begin to walk in it and then it, you know it comes out to you comes out of your mouth yes i'm going to this party x y and z right so let's think of it like this if somebody told you you're beautiful so this term beautiful comes to you and you're like, okay, you do start thinking about like, they just told me I'm beautiful. And then it keeps replaying, replaying in your mind. Then they get in your heart. Next thing you know, you're going to start saying, I am beautiful, right? So different things like that, we have to allow us to be at the right place at the right times, right? Because things are introduced to us. This is how words are released. They're first introduced to us, then they flow through our mind, and then they get in our heart, and then they come out of our mouths, right? So hello to all those that are just joining. And then moving on, like I said, we're going to be out of here by 717, y'all. Um, as a believer, why is it important that I use my mouth as a tool to bring God glory? So let's just think about that for a little bit. Why is it important? Why is it important? that I use my mouth as a tool to bring God glory, right? And so, like I said, as a believer, we're supposed to be speaking life, right? And when we speak life, it brings God glory. When we reply and back to God with God's word, that brings him glory as well. So life lies in our tongues. And we can see that in Proverbs 18, 21. If somebody can read Proverbs 18 and 21, that would be so nice. Um, death and life are, are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit mm. so life lies in my tongue miracle said death and life according to the scripture said death and life are in the power of our tongue right so it lies in our mouths but them that love the tongue that speak anything will eat the fruit whether you're speaking good or bad whatever you're speaking you're going to eat of that so if I'm saying, man, I, I'm too good for nothing, I'm going to eat that. I'm going to continually eat that. And then I'm going to become that, right? So this is what we're talking about tonight. So thank you so much for reading that scripture. And point number two, my mouth matches my heart. If somebody could read Matthew 15 and 8, that would be nice.
Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, go ahead, Elena. I'll let you do this one. Uh, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Mm. The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. That's good. Because the thing is, we don't want to just be speaking words that sound good. And our heart's not in it. Right? So when we're talking about tonight, it's time for us to open up our mouths and release some things. We're not talking about open up our mouths and seeing what everybody else is seeing. Because what somebody else is seeing may not be destined for your life, right? So if everybody else out here, say for instance, as we see everybody else out here getting married and we thinking like, okay, I want to get married too. I want to get married too. But right now may not be the time for you to get married. But because you're seeing it, marriage, marriage will come to you. But then when you get in it, are you able to actually live a healthy life with that? Because is it really your timing? So we have to allow our mouth really to match the heart of God, not our hearts. Because sometimes our hearts are different things going on in our hearts, right? Because this scripture right here says, uh, Matthew 15, 18 from the Passion Translation says, but what comes out of your mouth reveals the core of your heart. Words can pollute, not food. So what comes out of our mouth really comes from our heart so we may be seeing some things and thinking it's it's nothing it don't mean nothing but really it's deep down in our heart so if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and start saying man i don't look right i just don't look right and you think it's nothing but it's something deep down in your heart that may be a insecurity that you have about yourself that you didn't even know about right so th at that point in time you need to check your heart like whoa 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 who was i around what was i introduced to what did I let flow through my mind? What did I let get in my heart? And why am I now speaking this type of way about myself? I never used to speak like this about myself, right? And then next point we have is words release our faith. That, that's why it's important for us to use our mouth as a tool to bring God glory because it releases our faith. I'm going to read this scripture to y'all. It's a little bit long, but I want to tell y'all about our guy, Abraham. At this time, his name was still Abram in Genesis 13. 14 through 18 it says this and the lord said to abram after lot had separated from him lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward for all the land which you see i give to you and your descendants forever and i will make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that if a man could number the dust of the earth then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees at Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to God, to the Lord. So basically, Abram at the time, he was childless. Him and his wife, they were up there in age. Like at this time, if we're looking at in today's time, we're saying they were senior, senior citizens. They weren't just 60. They were in their 90s and things like that. But at the time, I believe Abraham was maybe he was about 80 or something at this time, 80 or 90. I don't have the specific numbers, but I do want you to know that he was childless. But God called him out and told him, hey, you're going to have many descendants. You're going to have many children, right? That's going to come from your own loin, right? And so Abraham at that time, he was introduced to this thing by God. And so for him to actually get up and because God told him, go for I will give it to you, right? He said, I will give you the, your, I will give it to you and the, your descendants forever. So it God, he was introduced to it. And then he allowed it to flow through his mind. And then he got into his heart. And then I believe when he went to go make that altar, I believe that at the altar, he was typically meeting with God, speaking to him like, God, you said you were going to make me. This is what I firmly believe, because if we notice today in today's world at the church and, you know, you think about an altar, people go to an altar for prayer. Right. So at the altar, you're going for prayer for different things. Some people may be going for jobs, healing and different things like that. But sometimes you have a moment with God, like that's where I was looking it up. And 
it's, it talked about you having an encounter with God at the altar, right? So at the altar, you, you just maybe having your open arms or things like that, but it's really an open heart hearing back from the father, right? For what he said about you. So here, Abram, he had built an altar for God where he met with God. And I will really believe at this time he was getting into agreement with God and he was beginning to open up his mouth and release what he heard from God so he can see it come to pass, right? And so... And as you read later, if you finish reading the book of Genesis, you will see that that came true. And even to this day, believers are called the seed of Abraham. So his testimony, where he opened up his mouth and released, is still living today. So, and that was many, many years ago. So that was there from Abram, right? And so the last part is God rewards them that diligently seek him. Right, so Hebrews eleven six says this: God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek Him. Right, so if somebody could read that scripture, that would be great. Hebrews eleven and six. anybody can read it <laughs> yeah, it's impossible to please god without faith because the one who draws near to god must believe that he exists and that he rewards people who try to find him wow thank you so much for that so that means that without faith faith it's impossible to please god so that means that if i'm not open up my mouth and releasing the things that i want to see which i yet don't see it's unpleasing to god so me opening up my mouth saying, God, I decree and declare I'm going to be wealthy, healthy, and fit for your glory, right? Although at this point in time, I may be looking in my end, I may be financially low. I may not be in a right state of health, and I may be not in the right conditioning of my weight. But I'm going to decree and declare those things before I see them. When you start decreeing and declaring things before you see them, that's pleasing to God. And we know that God wants you to be fit. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be wealthy because we can see in the scripture, one of the scriptures that I love to read, and I, I think it's uh, 3 John 2, 3 John third john one two yes third john one two it says beloved i wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers so that means that god already put in his word what he wants us to do so when we begin to open up our mouths and decree the things that we believe that god has said in the word although we may not see them that's pleasing to god and as we read in the scripture god is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him so even though i may not see it on a daily basis i'm going to thank god for it until it comes to the past and even after it comes to the to pass, I should still be thanking God, right? I should still be thanking God because he brought it to pass just as he has written it to come to pass. Anybody else got an example that they want to share or a testimony, not example, a testimony about how God rewarded you when you diligently sought him and you open up your mouth and confess some things? Hi, Tom and Nice. Hi, I'm sorry I was late, Miss Miller. Hey, Miss Miller. Hey, everybody. Um, I just well, let me say this. Okay, um, you you ladies know me. I know you said um, miracles on the line. I think um, you said um, who else is here? Um, oh um, help me out. Hmm. Help me with my FYE. Um, Elena. 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 Thank you, sweetie. Hi, ladies. Yes. I'm not sure who else was on here, but anyway. So Tom and these, you know, been talking about God is a rewarded that those that diligently seek him. So um, you ladies know I was, um, and uh, I'm going to say this, but it's not always material things, <clears throat> but then sometimes he'll do that too. So you ladies know, I, you know, I've been working at Lincoln for a while and uh, I've been working professor post. She always be pushing me to do things. So we had started on, the um fun fridays some, something they were doing um and you know i'm in the background i usually am not one 
I, I'm just in the background helping, doing, you know, what I'm supposed to do, trying to be obedient to God. And, um, well, anyway, so, um, I, you know, I get upset sometimes with the math department, you know, not saying, um, let me make this quick, not saying I want to teach math, but, you know, being available. So Elena and um, Miracle and even um, Tamanese, you know how it goes when you're, you know, working with the students or you're working with other professors or whatever. So, um, you know, I appreciate Poe for how she made things happen for me. Like she made a way one year when I was able to teach the math course oh, way back when. And then, um, you know, a couple things happened. So, and so now I'm working as an advisor and they have a new program with the Lyft students. So I'm helping them. But to say all this, you know, guys, I would do something for Lincoln and they don't have to pay me, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, my heart is to be there for the students. Uh, you know, I, I would do it. I would do it for free if I didn't have to pay for a car payment and rent and stuff like that. But I'm just saying that God will open up ways and make ways that you're like, whoa. So just keep the faith, um, you know, just be diligent like Tom and Issa is teaching us to know that God sees and knows everything and he makes ways. So uh, Professor Poe with grants and things that we're finding, she kind of blew my mind because I was like, mm, you know, I'm just going to do this. This is a part of my job anyway, right? But, you know, she actually was saying, you're going to get paid for this. And I'm like, what? You know, like, I'm not looking for, you know, to be paid. So, you know, to say all that, that that was God. <laughs> that had to be God. Because everything that you do does not have a price for it and to it, but when things like that happen, it's just like, oh God, you know, you you entrusted me that you're doing this for me. I'm not looking for this, you know, I really am not. So, and I know with Tom and Issa and Miracle and Elena, you know, we, we do things sometimes not looking for reward. So, you know, all that stuff you all help with FYE and helping to make things happen for the student, God will reward you. He will reward you like when you're unexpecting it or it's just on time. Um, he's just that good and he's great. So to say all that, God will reward you. It may be good friends. Like, you know, you all are good friends to each other. You can't find good friends. So, you know, keep that bond that you guys have. Um, it, it may be um, like somebody sending you some money that you don't know, you know? And again, it's not always material. It's, you know, it's just things sometimes you can't even buy. Mm -hmm. So, and the piece of him that keeps us, that's, oh, uh, that's just a lot. So anyway, I'm sorry to come in all late like that, but, you know, just be diligent, keep seeking God. He will, he will let you know you, you're okay. And things are okay. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what they look like, just, you know, remember he is diligent. He is faithful. Yeah. He is a faithful God. So you ladies know that some of the th things you've experienced, but he, there's more that he wants to do for you. There is more, much, much more. So stay in here and keep um, telling, you know, folks about the goodness of God. Um, be that example because, you know, people are looking and with your influence, you ladies will touch a lot of folks. I know it. I just know it because you're touching a lot of folks that you might not even know it. You may not never know it. They may come back later on and say, you know, miracles such and such. Tom and East, yeah. Elena, yeah, you did it, you know. So just, just you know, if, if it is, like Tom Lee said, just continue to thank God. Continue to praise him and thank him um, for his, you know, faithfulness. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> Bless awesome. you, girl. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome because she was right here on, like, God rewards you when you're not even looking for it. So, you know, when she say it, it may not be money, but it may be uh -oh. good friends. It may be a job opportunity. It may be a promotion. You know, when you're not even looking about it, but you you confessing out of your mouth on a daily basis, Father, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I thank you, God, that you supply all my needs. I'm never in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not worry. You know, if you say things like that on a daily basis, you're aligning yourself 
to walk in the divine purpose that God has for you. That could be friends, family, rejoining back together, whatever you're in need of. When you begin to confess it out of your mouth, and I love that, Miss Miller said she wasn't even looking for it, but she already knew the God that she served was going to bring her into good and mighty things. And so, like she said, we don't never know who we are influencing. So our prayer lives make a difference. And it's important for us to tap into the power of a prayer life. Tap into the prayer life. Because sometimes I try to fight with my own physical words to a person. But sometimes you need to pray that God touches the heart of that person. One of the scriptures said, God, help, help them to turn the heart of flesh the heart of stone into a heart of flesh meaning god break up the the heart the walls around their heart and let them be easy as i speak to them right so sometimes we, we do have a heart of stone we have a heart of stone uh, uh, towards si situations towards different people and the only thing honestly that has ever helped my heart of stone was getting into prayer and god began to ease me like time needs even though you went through that it's okay because i'm still here Taiwanese, even though they left you, it's fine because I'm still here. But I didn't know that until I got into prayer and really seen God's hand on my life and really heard back from God. And I know that sometimes, like when I first started off, I didn't always pray. I didn't always know what to say to God. But I thank God because Jesus makes intercession for us and he's praying for us even now. Jesus is already praying for us. So sometimes I might just got to write it down. Hey, God, this is how I felt today. And this is what happened today. Even though he knows, it's just having a conversation. You know, when you wake up and for those that live with family or different things like that, you talk to your family in your house, right? So the same way you talk to your family in your house, God wants you to talk to him. Hey God, what's up? Today was a good day. You was there all along. I know I walked into some, into some crazy mess, but you was right there with me. You know, having that real conversation with him, seriously, y'all, I be having the time of my life in my car. <laughs> I really do. I be talking to God different things. Even today, like I was having a deep prayer. Like, you know, you know how you be having those deep conversations. And, you know, I was having a deep prayer. My feet was a little bit on that pedal. You know, I was going to speed limit, but boom, here go a red camera light. And I said, oh, stop. I said, stop the conversation right in the middle. And then, you know, <laughs> I had to stop it. I had to stop it because I wasn't getting a ticket. I wasn't getting a ticket, y'all. I stopped it in the middle. I stopped. And then I went over the, a little bit over the line, but I ain't, I ain't pass it. I ain't pass it or nothing. And the, the cameras blink twice. I'm like, I don't know why the camera blink. I ain't pass the light. So I stopped the conversation and I said, you know, God, we was having a good conversation. I'm getting back. I know God, but you, I know God, I know God, I'm going to slow down. <laughs> You know, I started having that real conversation because I was getting a little hype. You know how you get a little hype? Your head started getting into it. My whole body was in this prayer. Like it was in my right foot on the pedal. <laughs> and so it was that serious. But anyways, um, that's how my time is with God. Like sometimes it may be a cry out like, but it, you know, most of the time it's a God, I decree and declare different things like that, especially when I'm praying for people. But sometimes, you know, if you at work, you might can't go into a father. I decree and declare. You might say, God say, God, I thank you. Or you still here. You know, different things like that when you at work or different situations and things like that. But anyways, I'm not going to hold y'all up. Like I said, we're going to be out here by 717 or before then. So give me a reaction of, are you getting something from this? Give me a reaction on your little screen. Use one of the reactions. I see somebody saying they getting some info in this. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so the last thing, we got another challenge. We have arrived. We are at another challenge. So last month we was meeting with God and, you know, some of us took our prayer lives up. Some of us are still fighting to get our prayer lives good and things like that. But this is going to be a challenge for 21 days straight. So put a reminder on your phone, put an alarm on your phone, confess this or something that's close to this or whatever God gives you. But literally for the past, let me see, maybe a week, maybe a week or five days, I have been professing and confessing this. And even though my situation is still around, you know, we all go through situations, even though my situation is still present, my heart is easy upon it. I'm not so hard hearted upon that situation. So I started confessing this and I want each and every one of us just to look at it. You can take a screenshot of this. 
confess this for the next 20 days and I, did, I, I can guarantee that you're going to see a difference in your life. I can guarantee that you are going to see a difference in your life. And if you want me to just share this slide or matter of fact, I might just screenshot it myself and send it to y'all. So that way, matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yes, Tommy. Yes, I was going to ask if you can, because it's a little little for some of us. A little. <laughs> I got so if you. you can, yeah, that way we'll have it on our um screen, so you know, on our phone, so we can confess it daily. Yes. That would be nice. Yeah. So honestly, God gave this to me, y'all. Um, what was I doing? I don't even. I was going through a hard, hard time last week. Last week was hard for me, y'all. But I overcame, and that's what this this uh, whole confession is about. And the Lord began to download this stuff to me. Um, one one night, I, I was so like deep into everything that started piling up. I think my whole body started to feel it. And you know, I good thing God, thank you God for allowing the right people to be in our life. Just like Miss Miller said, sometimes it's those solid friendships. And I had some mentors that I was able to reach out to and they said, start doing it, boom, boom, boom. They started giving me encouraging words and different things like that. And from there, I end up creating this confession. And I'm back to, you I'm back to my confessions and I'm telling you, it's been good. But anyways, this is the confession. I overcome by the blood of the lamb. And according to the Bible that I read, the perfect lamb was already slain, which means forever I am an overcomer. My words carry the testimony that I have experienced and the testimony that I'm about to witness. Therefore, I shall speak words that match the character of Christ. I shall have what I say, no matter what my situation says or the people around me are saying, I believe the word of God. So every day y'all confess that and I can guarantee you your situation will change. And I'm looking forward to y'all, you know, checking up on y'all and hearing about the different things that the Lord has allowed you to witness as you confess this daily confession. And I got this whole confession from these different scriptures below, Revelations 12 and 11, Mark 11, 24. Philippians 4 and 8 and Isaiah 55 and 11. And before we end, I'm going to just read all those scriptures to you because it's the last thing. Like we're, we're done. But I want to read these scriptures to you just so that you can know. These are some powerful scriptures that stand on as well. No matter what, if you're trying to build your prayer life up, start by a confession. Start by reading a daily scripture at least five minutes a day. Start by, because, you know, we might not have all the words to pray, to say, and different things like that. We may not even know what to pray. You know what I mean? But sometimes just reading that word of God out loud. That's your Tommy, in itself. Yes, ma'am. I have one question. So you made up that daily um, thing yourself? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Just want to know. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. No follow. Yeah, I make up prayers and daily things and stuff like that y'all because god gives them to me so i utilize it you know i really do and so revelation is 12 and 11 this is from this is some of the words were rooted from this scripture it says this i'm reading from the new king james version and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death really which i was really coming from this the first part of the the scripture that says and they overcame him the adversary meaning our enemy we overcame our situation by the blood of the lamb so i overcome because jesus already died so this is what the scripture is saying i overcame the enemy i overcame my situation by the blood of the lamb by the blood of jesus christ and by the word of their testimony and by the word that came out of my mouth that jesus christ that saved my life that's how I overcame. I continue to stand on the word of God, right? And then Mark eleven twenty four 24 is another powerful scripture. Yes, yes, yes. Got y'all. I send it to y'all. And the chat is going to be saved so I can go back and read it when I'm done. Um, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, my pastor read this on a daily basis. Like he really does. And it's rooted and grounded in me at this point in time. It says this, therefore I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Y'all, my situation was like here and I was feeling like all the way down here. But I believe I, I got out of the situation 
and I prayed and I really believed that God would bring me above the situation. And I watched my situation go down here, even though it's still here today, I watched it go down and my prayer and my boldness went up. So this is what that scripture is talking about. And then Philippians 4 and 8, yo, Philippians 4 and 8, be really go in. It really do. It says this. I don't know why I went to 18, 4, 8, 4, 8. Okay, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good or poor, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I had to get my mind off this situation and started getting on to God loves me, started getting on to God's going to make a way for me, started getting to God wouldn't tell me to do this if he hadn't, hadn't had made a way already for me. That's what I had to put my mind on. And then Isaiah 55 and 11, Isaiah 55 and 11, which says this, Isaiah 50, okay, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. That's one right there that everybody needs to really, really, really grab hold to. That's that Isaiah 55 and 11. So that's it for tonight, y'all. I want to thank each and every one of y'all. We're going to stop the recording. See y'all to all those that have gotten on the recording. We'll see you next month. For those that have gotten on the recording,